Well, hello, my name is Todd Smith. Uh, I work at Comcast Business. Um, and today uh, I get to share with you one of the most fun projects I've worked on in a, a very long time. Um, and this one, the reason why it was so fun for me is because I got to work with my son who recently graduated high school just last year. Um, super smart kid and uh, he helped me with, with an issue that I run into frequently whenever I'm troubleshooting, debugging, uh, Wi-Fi issues. Um, so to start, we, we kind of got me to this point in working with my son. Um, I, I do a lot of debugging, troubleshooting. You know, customers ask us to come out and help them identify, uh, you know, issues that they might be having. Um, and, and this one in particular was several months ago. Um, it was a restaurant chain, and you know those the, on those tables they have those little uh, devices where you can, you know pay you know, your bill right there at the table. You can play dumb games, which I don't think anybody ever does on those devices. Um, well, anyway, those devices, when customers go to you know, put their credit card in and pay for their food, um, the restaurant was noticing that sometimes, uh, particularly when they're really busy, that those, payment, um, those payments weren't getting processed. And uh, they didn't know why. And similar to that, they had another system that their uh, wait staff use to submit an order uh, that they take on their, their tablet um, and goes back to the kitchen and sometimes those would get lost. They weren't getting to where they needed to go. And so uh, I went on site to uh, just see what I can find out. Um, so a lot of our customers use Meraki um, and uh, I, I like Meraki. I, I think their dashboard is uh, very intuitive. There's, you know, they're always adding more and more information um, to help us, you know, understand how healthy our, our wireless networks are. Um, and so, of course, I, you know, I, I wanted to look and see, you know, what were some of the, the, the logs, the client logs that were coming up. Um, I wanted to look at the different configurations on the AP side of things, on the SSID side of things. Um, and so I was, I was bouncing, around, bouncing around all over the place. I want to give you guys a little bit of a, a taste of that, and I'm sure a lot of you are already very familiar with this process um, because there is a lot of Meraki out there. Um, and so here you go, I, I'm in the dashboard right now. Um, and the first thing I'd, I'd like to do is go here to the event logs and just kind of see what's happening. Um, and so, you know, I, I go through that and like, okay, well, it looks like, because I also did a PCAP and, you know, gathered some other data and I thought, all right, well, it looks like there's, these devices are actually disconnecting from the network at these times when these payments weren't getting processed or the orders weren't getting sent to the kitchen. So I wanted to kind of hone in on that, which is part of what you do when you're, you're doing debugging. Um, so I go up here to like 11, 8 to 11 disassociation. Uh, all right, well, I've got that filtered down. Um, now, now what do I do? Well, you know what? Let me look at the SSIDs. There's a lot here on this, my Wi-Fi is hotter than yours. Um, let me uh, let me check out how that's configured. So, um, you know, to do that, I got to go over here, access control. Uh, here we go. It's the first one that came up. Awesome. And so here I can look and see how this SSID is configured. Their pre-shared key, uh, 802.11r is off, 11w is on, uh, mandatory DHCP is disabled. Um, but I'm wondering, well, you know, there's other information I would like to see, like, are the, what are the connectivity issues? Are there any other con connectivity issues taking place on this particular SSID? Uh, you know, what's the minimum bit rate for this SSID? Um, just different things that I would like to know that aren't here, but this is where the SSID information is. Um, all right, so, I, I need to go check out more. Um, let me go back to my event logs here and, and see if I can figure out, well, maybe it's a particular AP that's having issues. Um, in this case here, we're looking, there's a lot of like, it doesn't seem like it's a particular AP. Let me just look at one and see how it's configured so I can understand a bit about um, you know, just the overall config of the network. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is go to wireless and 
access point so I can see all of the access points. By the way, this is my home, so I've got three. Um, and here we go. So I've got three APs. Okay, well, this is good. It tells me what uh, channels are currently configured. Uh, current clients, uh, that's, that's helpful. Um, scroll a bit. What do we got? Oh, well, I, that's, that's about it. What about transmit power? That, I thought it was usually here with the channels. Um, all right, well, let me, let me dive in, I guess, and see what the actual AP is going to show me if I click on that. And, okay, here we get some channel utilization. That's pretty cool. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, clients. Um, so there's some information here that's interesting, that's helpful. Um, but the point is I'm bouncing around all over the place. And when you're debugging, you, you, I don't know about you guys, for me, if I lose my train of thought when I'm debugging, I got to start all over again. And I don't want to, I don't want to do that because it, it's very time consuming to debug. I want to be able to see the information that's pertinent to what I'm trying to debug, ideally all in one screen. And so after doing a lot of this kind of debugging, that's where I was left with. I wish I had a way to see everything all in one screen, a tool that I can use. And so now getting back to my son, who's awesome. His name is Asher. He graduated high school last year. He's, he likes to program. He was looking for like a summer internship about with the head, you know, to do something with software development. Um, and he couldn't find one. I'm like, well, hey, Asher, I've got a project for you. Um, so I hired my son to build this tool that I wanted that would help me with debugging, uh, you know, Meraki Wi-Fi. Um, so I even went out and got the URL Meraki Wi-Fi dot app. Um, so here we are. This, this is the tool. Still a little bit under development, so hopefully we don't run into too many issues. But let me grab, oh, by the way, this tool is run, uses the Meraki APIs, uh, which I love. It's one of the things I like about Meraki is, is you can access pretty much everything via their APIs. So you need to put in an API key. Uh, once you have that in there, then you can see here the list of your networks. And so if this was like a customer of Comcast Businesses or you know, one of yours, likely you're gonna see a lot more networks to choose from. Um, a lot of times each, each site, you know, in the case that I brought up before of restaurants, you would have, each restaurant would be a network. And so there'd be a long list of networks that you can choose from. You can click on the one that you wanna see. And then once you click on that, AP calls are happening. Um, right away, you now you see though, all of the event logs um, that, you know, were over here in the Meraki dashboard, which only shows, you know, 30 at a time. But uh, here you can get a lot more because it's all API driven. Um, so there you've got all of the event logs. You've got, I'm just gonna go up here in order. You've got the SSID table, all the different SSIDs that are configured. And what do we have here? We've got, which ones are, exist? Are they enabled? Their security? Um, minimum bit rate, that's pretty cool. I didn't see that uh, in the Meraki dashboard. There's the mandatory DHCP, uh, 11 R and W. It shows those if they're enabled, disabled. The VLANs that, that are tied to those SSIDs, current client count. Um, and this is a really cool one, connectivity issues. Meraki actually, if you drill down far enough in, into an AP or into an SSID, you can see what it reports as, you know, the number of connectivity issues. And so we got a seven there. What's really cool though, if I mouse over that, it'll split it up, how, how Meraki divides them, association, authentication, DHCP, DNS. Um, so it really gives, gives you a kind of an at a glance way to understand where are the issues uh, happening with Meraki. And just even more important to me at least was how is everything configured? Um, go up to the APs here, you see the, the different APs that, uh, are, that are on this network. MAC addresses, their model, you know, this is really cool. The switch port that they're connected to in the uh, Meraki switch. Um, firmware version, I got a couple that I'm testing with, so they're on a custom version. Um, channel, channel width, and here's TX power. You didn't, we didn't see that when we were over in the Meraki dashboard. 
Um, that's oftentimes very helpful for us to understand you know, issues like you know, coverage issues or whatever. Um, channel utilization, I don't know what's going on there, but that's usually showing up. Client count, and again, connectivity issues. Again, if you mouse over, it shows how Meraki divides them up. So with this, I can see a lot of stuff at one glance um, on one screen and uh, very helpful for me when I'm debugging. And one of the really cool things about this that I want to highlight as well is this issue with the restaurant that I brought up earlier. One of the issues that, they, they act, that was actually causing some of the problems they were seeing is it was a disassociation um, with a particular reason code. And I got the reason code because I did a PCAP, right? A wireless PCAP, you look at that data and it shows you for all the disassociations, it shows you what the reason code is for that disassociation that you can then Google and figure out what's happening there for that. Um, I was looking for that in, in the Meraki dashboard and there are no reason codes. You know, if I go, I want to again look at 11, 80211 disassociations, I see some information or details, but what I was seeing in the PCAP was reason 34. And I don't just looking here, I don't see anything that's reason 34. Um, so what we built in this was a way to, let's put in a custom filter. Um, let's do reason 34. Let's add that. And now the event log, I don't know if you saw it, it just filtered on all of the event logs that have reason 34. Um, as part of what's uh, returned in that API query. You can see here now, this is, uh, here we go, reason 34. So that lines up with what I'm seeing in my wireless PCAP. Very helpful to understand what those reason codes are as we kind of debug and, and try to figure out what's going on on our customer's network. So I wanted to share with you all uh, this very fun project that uh, my son and I Bill, he did all the coding for it. I just kind of told him how I wanted it to look, gave him some examples. Um, one thing that we're currently building right now is this config audit, which is if you have a lot of different networks um, and you want to make sure they're all configured per whatever you think is the best practice, uh, I've got some static um, configurations over here that I consider best practice, you know, 20 megahertz wide channels, you know, you've got your, your power ranges, minimum bit rates. You can set all those in this uh, settings area, um, put in your API key. It's going to display up here in this area up here, all of the networks that you have. And then you'll start noticing that the boxes around each network, as it goes through and audits them, it'll have like a, a green border around one box that means that the configuration for that network is within what you defined as best practice or what you would like it to be. And if it's not, if it's outside of that, it's red. And so that way you can really kind of go through and quickly at a glance see how many of the networks that you're managing are configured the way you want them to be um, or which ones need some attention, some optimization. This is something we're currently working on. Uh, I wish I could show it to you, but it's not quite ready yet. Um, and I'm gonna share one last thing with you guys. Once we have a dashboard like this, and once we understand how all the Meraki APIs work, um, just recently we were doing a deployment with another customer, and um, you've got one company who's doing the install, you have the customer who's kind of managing um, everything and sending the, the, the install companies out. We have us that once things are installed, we need to know that it's been installed, that the, the, all the devices are online so that we can then apply configs to them. Uh, upload floor plans, things like that. Put you know the APs on the floor plan, um, the lo locations, and so there, we were running into uh, several issues um, and just trying to stay on top of all of that. So I told my son, you know, it'd be really cool if you know we can just at a glance see all of the networks, all of the sites that uh, have been installed or not, um, and what their current state is. And so we put our heads together and we just came up with this really quick at a glance dashboard here that shows, for example, this site 104, um, the APs, um, all the devices are loaded in the site, but the, the devices aren't online, online yet. Um, so, and this is reflective here with these icons that show uh, dormant. Um, but what's nice about this is that even though the devices aren't 
installed yet, someone loaded the AP locations on the floor plan in Meraki so that when those devices do come online, you know, we'll know where those APs are. And so this shows us here that even though they're not online yet, they're not installed yet, they're placed on the floor plan in Meraki, which is very helpful for the situation we're in. Uh, this is crazy. There's some sites apparently that are having some issues. Um, I should probably get on the phone with them right now. There are a lot of sites that are having some issues. I've never seen <laughs> so many sites having some issues before, so I probably should wrap it up and get on the phone with the customer to help to, to figure out what's going on there. But again, I'm super proud of my son, Asher. Uh, this is him on his LinkedIn. I'm gonna show off a bit and, and brag on my son. He did all the development work for this, um, and it's just amazing to, uh, to have him as a resource to build this to, for us together work on this, put it all together, um, and just give him a little bit of, of a taste of what his dad does uh, from day to day in the world of Wi-Fi. So thank you very much.